Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I have an important message for all my empaths out there. This is um, a concept and an idea or perception that all too often, unfortunately, um, empathic people are not taken into consideration and it eventually gets them jammed up each and every time. And that thought and idea is you have to save yourself first and that sounds really simple but empathic people oftentimes they take on other people's problems um, they run to the aid and rescue other people without consideration to their own situations or what they can actually manage they enmesh themselves because of their large degree of feeling empathy for others and they're unable to um, separate feeling bad for other people versus taking on other people's problems and issues. I mean, even when we go on an airplane and before we take off, they always say, you know, during a time of crisis, when the mask falls down, you take the oxygen first because if you're not breathing and you're dead, you can't rescue and help anyone else to begin with. And it kind of goes along with not being able to pour from an empty cup. So if the empathic person is constantly making withdrawals from themselves as far as their energy, um, their resources, their time, then eventually, you know, they're going to be depleted. And it's actually, it becomes counterproductive at that point. Because now you can't finish what you started as far as trying to help someone else because you've overextended yourself and now both of you the person you're trying to help and you are in a crisis or in a, a bad situation so it's so important for uh, people that have a lot of compassion you know empathic people are my empaths basically to learn how to consider the notion of saving yourself first you know, let's say I grew up in a impoverished neighborhood. You know, I grew up with little and I want to go back and help. Well, I need to get myself financially together if I want to help in a monetary sense. Or if I start making a little bit of uh, progression and I'm just spending it without really getting where I ultimately need to be so that I can be able to help them and myself, you know, cause I've been able to pull myself out of the situation. Not I'm stuck here with you guys because every time I get something extra, I'm giving it away. And ultimately I can't get out of the hood either. So we're all down here, you know? So it's really about um, having a balance and being able to have those boundaries. So it's so important to save yourself first. And that's important because this channel talks about narcissistic abuse. And a lot of times survivors fell for those, um, those woe is me stories that the narcissist has told them and everybody else that they've met before them. And it kind of triggers inside of an empath that's walking on a dark side or, you know, more toxic with their compassion because they don't have know how to balance it yet it's going to trigger them to want to come to the rescue it's going to trigger them to want to make that narcissist feel loved it's going to trigger them to want to rescue the narcissist from you know all of the situations that they continuously if you look below the surface they typically are continuously um, in this situation over and over. It's just you or the new person that they're going to drain. Okay? And that's the other aspect to being that sacrificial lamb and not saving yourself first. Oftentimes, you're going to people who aren't putting anything back in you to begin with. So they're just going to withdraw from you and it's not any type of mutual exchange or, okay, you're helping them in this aspect, but you know, they're able to help you in this aspect and it's balancing out somewhere. And that typically is not happening. So, you know, hopefully you guys can begin, you know, if you find that you are an empath or you have a lot of compassion for people, 
um, really learn how to balance that out in life so that you don't um, overextend yourself and ultimately just making the situation worse than beforehand. So, you know, I don't tell you guys these things out of thin air. I had to learn to master that in my own life because we've seen that meme on Facebook where a person, where they were saying something to the tune of, I put myself in messed up situations trying to help others. And that's not something to be proud of, per se. You're not supposed to put yourself in a bad situation necessarily to help others. Okay? So, you know, when someone has an issue and they bring it to you, you have to consider, you know, can you actually take that on? You know, it, you can't be just running off of your emotions. All right, because you want to have stability in life, you need to balance your logic and your emotions with your decision making. Because as an empath, that means you feel. You typically, whereas the narcissist doesn't have the capability to feel, you can overfill in situations. All right, so you have to be mindful about yourself and know yourself well enough to know, you know what, this is a pitfall of mine's. I do have a habit of overextending myself um, and then try to create some um, remedies to help prevent you from, you know, continuing those patterns. Maybe it might be where you have to delay an answer to someone if you know that you're going to say yes right away and then later on you're like, oh my gosh, why did I say that? I really can't do that or it's really not a good idea or I'm really not available or you know whatever the case may be it might be a situation where you learn how to say um, can I get back to you on that let me get back to you on that and it buys you time to come down off of that emotional high that's triggered from their emergency and then you know once you've given them given that time to think about it in your logic then maybe you might just not automatically give them that yes, or you might not, you might feel strong enough to at least compromise. Well, I can't do that, but I can do this. All right, and that's the next thing that I want to point out. If someone comes to you with a situation and they're asking you for all of this, and a lot of times in paths that don't have that balance, it's like an all or nothing with you. You feel like. You need to do everything that they're asking you for. And maybe that's just not feasible for you, and that's okay. You could say, well, you know, you wanted to borrow $2,000, but honestly, I can help you out with 500 You know, you're not giving up your mortgage money, your rent money. Your car is about to get repossessed now because you gave your bill money to them to try to meet the number that they wanted instead of just meeting them or having them meet you where you actually are and if that's not good enough for them then that should tell you some things as well all right so you're going to give yourself some time in between making decisions and you're not going to feel obligated to meet their all of their demands if it's just not feasible it's just not feasible you know you could at least start with those two um, things that will help you in your decision-making process, all right? But you must save yourself first, all right? Now, I want to talk about this on a psychological level. If you still have a lot of brokenness inside of you, you, well, number one, you're not going to fix the narcissist. So let me just say that. You're not going to fix them. You're not going to change their mind. Um, you're not going to take them out of those toxic patterns. You can take them out of your life, <laughs> The pattern doesn't have to be a part of your circumference, but, you know, you need to do your shadow work before you try to, you know, help somebody else per se, you know, because then we have two toxic people running off of each other. And that's typically what we have when we have the narcissist um, and the empath in a relationship. Okay. The broken parts of you are able to tolerate the narcissist and function and thrive in that situation. But as you notice, the healthier that you get, 
you know, the bigger the gap or the bridge, um, the gap is between you and the narcissist because the bridge is the toxicity. Okay. But I don't want to, um, fall off a topic here. The main thing that I just want you guys to just keep in mind moving forward is, you know, you have to save yourself first. All right. You guys make decisions to go no contact from the narcissist. And a lot of times I'm talking to survivors, but they're going to experience this. What if they have to be homeless or what if they, you know, you're, you're still thinking about somebody else first and their consequences for the situation um, that they actually cause, which is you pulling away from them. I talk to survivors and they're still talking about the narcissist consequence with empathy for them and feeling bad for any consequence uh, you know, the supply that you were giving them that they're not going to get anymore. All right. So you have to save yourself. And meanwhile, you're drowning yourself. So shift the focus and make sure, you know, anything that you're approaching in your life that you're thinking, you know, logically, you know, is this a sound decision? Can I actually take this on? Is this something that I should be doing? All right, guys. So I hope that, you know, someone could definitely take heed to this um, message. I know a lot of people need to hear it. If this video resonates with you, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. 500 videos here to help you understand narcissistic abuse, to help you understand toxic relationships, especially the one that you have with yourself, right? Um, to help you understand psychology and all types of things. Just watch the videos and take what you can to help you on your journey in life. I put them into playlists to help you find different toxics, not tox topics, <laughs> easily. I have a motivational playlist um, for the days that you're feeling down and out. Definitely keep that one in your back pocket to help lift you up, right? Um, with that being said, I do have a support group over on Facebook for survivors of narcissistic abuse. That link is below all of my videos. Just click it and be sure to inbox me and let me know that you are a survivor. If you don't have a profile picture or if your profile picture looks um, indecent, you know, you're just not going to get in. You have to really message me, especially if you don't have a profile picture and it looks like a fake profile. All right, because I really don't want to let any trolls in or anybody else's narcs um, into the group. All right, so definitely um, clear that up with me. With that being said, guys, I want to tell you about uh, my Patreon because I do offer coaching. You can find that information on my website, www.lakeacrawford.com. I do voice calls, um, Skype, FaceTimes, email coaching. I have mobile texting support that you can do as well. Now, um, as far as the Patreon, it's a great way for you to support the channel. So if you just simply want to support the channel, you can come on to Patreon. It's a monthly membership. You can pledge um, any amount that you would like to help support my cause in spreading awareness um, of emotional maturity and narcissistic abuse. All right. And then there's different, different memberships that you can choose from and they come with different perks. All right. And they're set at minimal prices. Like I have a $24.99 or basically $24.99 a month. Gives you semi-annual coaching um, with me and all of and access to my YouTube videos on Patreon and exclusive and extended videos that will never be here on YouTube. Okay. So um, if you sign up under that tier, you pay the $24.99. You can book your first session with me right away. And then you get one in six months and another six months. So you actually end up getting three sessions in one year. So this is good for anyone who has experienced financial abuse or they're like, you know what, I really want to get coaching from Coach Lakia, but my money's a little bit tight. Patreon is a happy medium between my YouTube and my website for those who would like to get um, extended services or access. All right, with that being said, guys, um, thank you for all of your support. Keep doing the work. And until next time, please take care.